I'd like to invite my associate, uh, Mr. Bob Bench, SBC Director and Senior Associate with Energy Profiles Limited, to present our 2017 Lifetime Achievement Awards. Bob. Thank you, Larry. And I would like to invite our honorees to come up to the stage. A little bit of information about the Sustainable Buildings Canada's Lifetime Achievement Awards. In 2005, as part of the first Green Building Festival, Sustainable Buildings Canada, whom I will refer to henceforth as SBC, decided to recognize those individuals who have demonstrated both a long-term commitment to sustainability and have manifested that commitment by their legacy in this field. The three recipients today will bring us to a total of 33 award winners. The actual award is an emerald glass tower from Eclipse Awards made from 100% post-consumer recycled glass, having a rich, vibrant color, rendering it both reclaimed and beautiful. I'm going to post this picture of Eva Leggetti first, who is going to be an award winner, but was unable to be here today. Eva, among other accomplishments, and I should tell you she's in St. John's, and no Canadian needs to be told what province that is in. Um, but we have asked her to be present next year to receive her award. So if I can ask Gord Miller to stand. Gord Miller is among his other many accomplishments, the second environmental commissioner for the province. In this case, the award is actually two years old because we wanted to present it to him two years ago. And as I'll explain in a minute, he was unable to make it. Gord is an ecologist and environmental policy analyst with many years of experience in both the private and the public sector. After receiving a Bachelor of Science and Master of Science in Biology and Plant Ecology at the University of Guelph, he launched his career in industry in Guelph and then moved to Perry Sound and then to Thunder Bay. His next career move was to join the what was then the Ontario Ministry of the Environment, and after a suitable break-in period, he was off to Timmins as the district's senior environmental officer. He took a break from the ministry to launch a new environmental technician program at Sir Sanford Fleming, Fleming College in Lindsay, providing training in areas that included ecology, soil science, Hydro, hydro geology, watershed management, and environmental law. He came back to the Ministry of, Energy, of Environment, organized a training program for their staff on similar topics, and then formed and organized the Ontario Environmental Training Consortium of Community Colleges that eventually included a certification of environmental personnel. Then he was off to North Bay to run the Ministry of Environment District Office. After a little while, he left the ministry again and formed Miller Environmental Services. In 2000, he was appointed as the second Environmental Commissioner for, of Ontario, following Eva Ligeti. They must have liked him, and he them, because he was there for a total of three terms, three five-year terms. During that time, I think everyone involved in any aspect of the environment met and got to know him. I can honestly say that when I attended any such events, Gord was always there. After 15 years in that role, he decided to launch a second try at politics, but the Green Party's time had not yet arrived. Perhaps it is now making a dent on the BC landscape. 
According to some material I read, Gord moved into semi-retirement, but I doubt it. Gord continues to work hard to save the planet as he has always done and serves as a chair of the Board of Directors for Earth Roots and on the public advisory of the Canadian Electricity Association. It is for what he has achieved in this field and his, it his continued involvement that it is my pleasure to present the SBC Lifetime Achievement Award to Gord Miller. Where's the, where's the camera guy? Is that him? No? I don't know. All right, well, we can do it again. Thank you, Gord. I'd now like to ask, okay, back up, Michael Brooks to stand. Michael Brooks has been a commercial real estate lawyer for well over 30 years. His first degree was in environmental studies at Waterloo, followed by a Bachelor of Laws at Western University, what was then the University of Western Ontario, a Master of Laws at Osgoode Hall, an MBA from York, and a PhD in urban planning from Waterloo. Starting his career as a commercial real estate lawyer at Aird and Burles, he has, since 1997, been the chief executive officer of RealPAC, the trade association for public and institutional real estate investment companies. They are the people who have the money. From this position, Michael has guided RealPAC Real Pack to a number of sustainability initiatives. They published the first green lease in North America. They brought in the first global corporate social responsibility standards to members and others. They led the development of several industry publications on sustainability and energy and carbon management. They developed training courses on energy and sustainability. They introduced the 20 by 15 challenge, which was to the office sector to achieve an energy utilization intensity of 20 equivalent kilowatt hours per square foot per year by 2015. Progr a program that set a challenging energy target and reporting program for office buildings. They developed a normalized water consumption benchmarking tool and provided a carbon add-on for the energy management data set. Michael has been the person who led this organization who are most concerned about financial matters to undertake these North American leading sustainability initiatives. In addition, RealPAC has projects underway in solid waste management best practices, resilience for Canadian landlords, and updates on corporate social responsibility guideline paper and the RealPAC green lease. Michael is currently a special advisor to the United Nations Environment Program Financial Initiative for the Property Working Group a former member of the Global Reporting Initiatives Construction and Real Estate Sector Supplement Team and a former Director and Treasurer of the Canada Green Building Council. As his accomplishments demonstrate, Michael has a keen sense of how to move the real estate sector strongly in the direction of sustainability. It's what he has achieved in this field and his continuing involvement that it is my pleasure to present the SBC Lifetime Achievement Award to Michael Brooks. And finally, I'll ask Peter Tavins to, to stand. In my opening remarks, I must say that I forgot to say that I have known all of these gentlemen for periods ranging from about 12 years to 25. P 
Peter is originally from London, Ontario, but it was in Toronto that he hit his stride. He attended York University in political science and while there became actively involved in the Students' Council. His active, activist bent rose further when as president of a Riverdale environmental group called the Citizens for a Safe Environment, he led their successful lobbying efforts to end garbage incineration at the Commissioner Street plant in the Portlands. From there, he became managing director of a housing co-op and rose to be vice chair of the Cooperative Housing Federation of Ontario. From there, he ran for city councillor in Ward 8, Riverdale, and joined with three other councillors to convince city council to take money from the sale of the Mimico jail farm and place it in a fund for investing in environmental measures. This was the basis for the Ontario Atmospheric Fund, and it eventually led to the development of the Toronto Better Buildings Partnership. He was a member of the Toronto Board of Health for seven years and was chair for four. In that role, he had a major hand in banning smoking and shopping mall food courts, a move that presaged the city's action to extend that ban to restaurants and bars. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There's more. <laughs> From 1999 to 2004, Peter was the executive director of Greenpeace Canada. During this time, the group pressed for the adoption of the Kyoto Protocol, among many other environmental initiatives. In 2006, the NDP nominated Peter to run in a by-election in Beaches, York, and he won with almost half the votes. By October of that year, he was voted best member of provincial parliament by Now Magazine readers for his positions on climate change, the Portland's Energy Center, and early childhood learning centers in his constituency. He has also supported other issues, including same-sex parental rights, anti-toxics legislation, and rec recognition of foreign credentials for immigrants. Peter has now been re-elected in 2007, 2011, and 2014. He is currently the NDP critic for energy and education. There never seems to be a shortage of issues affecting the shorter and longer term issues that affect all of our lives. These include energy efficiency, rapidly rising electricity costs, keeping people safe from toxins, and integrating new Canadians into the economy, and a host of others. It is for what Peter has achieved in his field and his continued continued involvement that is my pleasure to present the Sustainable Buildings Canada Lifetime Achievement Award to Peter Tabbins. I'm now going to ask each of the recipients in the same order to come up and say a few words. Gord. <coughs> Well, thank you very much, and thank you for this award and that recognition and things. But I, 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 it's a very impressive group, and I have to make a couple of observations. The nice thing about uh, when you get to be my age and get retired, you see, is you, you have this depth of history to look back on. The, the first comment I got to make is, you know, looking back of years ago when we used to have these technical meetings, there seemed to be an awful lot of women in the room now. Isn't that a change? Right? If there was, yeah. That's a, very refreshing change, and it makes a lot of difference. But but what I think is the, the one comment I make, which is really uh, astounding to me, that in the last 10 years, you know, 10 years ago, uh, a lot of us were up here talking about ideas of some of the stuff we heard this morning, uh, you know, in, in the concept. You know, we need to do something about this. We need to do something about that. And now I come to these meetings, and it, 
is to talk about people doing something about that, right? And the actual have realized this, these technological changes, and we haven't got all the solutions, but we certainly made a serious effort at getting those solutions. And I, in a, in a ten-year period, may sound like a lot, long time to young people when you look back over a career of forty years and see what you did or didn't get accomplished. It is remarkable what you've done, so keep on doing it. Michael Brooks. Thank you, Bob. Uh, I'll be uh, even briefer. Uh, look, it's a very much a pleasure to be amongst you here today. Um, did I represent money? Is that what you said, Bob? Uh, so, uh, you know, the owner community, as I'm sure many of you experience, a bit of a bell curve. We've got leaders, we've got laggards, and uh, my job is to push. 20 by 15, um, I can tell you, was uh, a shock uh, to many in the industry to actually put a line in the sand and say, get to 20 by the year 20 by 15. Not everybody was happy with me, but it was the right decision. Uh, we released our final 20 by 15 report and full 25% uh, of our member buildings, over 400, uh, got there. But if I look back the six years that we've come uh, with buildings that participated every year, they've only improved 10%. And if we're to get to 30% CO2 reductions by 2030, man, we have got a long way to go. And it's really reliant on you to help get uh, our members and the community there. So uh, while it's terrific to uh, get this award, and I congratulate my colleagues as well, boy, there's still a lot of work to do. And uh, I'm not retiring quite yet. So uh, I, got more, I got more lifetime left. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. And now, Peter Tavins. It's a tight squeeze up here. Um, Bob, thank you very much. And Sustainable Buildings Canada, all of you who are here today, my thanks for this recognition, for this award. I've been spending decades, as have my colleagues, on this question of how to come to grips with climate change. And as a politician and as an activist, it's always been an extraordinarily difficult problem to move forward on. I remember the debates we had in Greenpeace in the 90s about how exactly we could make this movement one that would sweep millions into it, uh, millions who would take action and make a difference. Unfortunately, we weren't successful in the way we wanted to be, and we're facing a very grave situation globally. As a politician, and I had the opportunity to work with Bob in the 90s, the work that's done in the building sector is one of the best options we have for taking on climate change. There is no straight or simple route in taking on this issue, but buildings are a viable route. And not only is there a huge opportunity to make a big difference in terms of emissions, but a huge opportunity in terms of building the economy and putting people to work. So what you do is extraordinary. I know it's not easy. I know that you, I'm sure, come up against your very rough patches. But if we actually are going to be successful on climate change, you are going to be a central part of that fight. And for that, I thank you much more for that that you're doing than the award as much as I like the award. Thank you so much.